Good day and welcome back to Global Derivatives TV. We're here at the Global Derivatives Trading and Risk Management Conference with Jesper Andreessen from Danske Bank. Nice to meet you. Nice and to you. please, if we could just start, tell us about your background, how you got started in the business, and what you do for the bank. Okay. Um, I did a PhD in math and economics back in '97. After that, I worked in London um, as a quant, mainly on the exotics uh, side and exotic modeling. Um, since 2008, I worked for the Danske Bank, where I've been heading the quant team there. The focus has uh, moved much more towards the modeling of vanillas um, and exotics these days. And you can say that if you want to say something about what we do at the moment, it's really much, very much like applying exotic uh, or mathematical modeling techniques from the exotics to the vanilla world. And so applying rocket science to what used to be uh, considered relatively vanilla products. And so how long have you been coming here to this conference? I think. 13 or 14 years. 13, 14 years, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, would you say this is the best one so far this year, considering the you know, market conditions, or what are your, what are your thoughts about, about this year compared to previous years you've been here? Uh, there's a lot of interesting topics being presented here, a lot of uh, interesting ideas being uh, brought forward, and it's always good to meet uh, your colleagues in, in the industry and discuss, uh, also have informal discussions of, you know, away from the pure technical things about what they're currently working on and uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting, getting, getting some insights on what's going on in the rest of the industry. Okay. And what would you say the highlights are so far for you? Yeah, my, I mean, there's, uh, obviously the whole industry is a lot focused, is very focused on new regula regulatory aspects, uh, capital charges on credit, counterparty credit risk, uh, market risk, so forth. A lot of uh, quant energy is going into that at the moment, mm -hmm. particular, uh, yeah, uh, here. Uh, but next to that, there's also um, a lot of uh, attention is now being given, rather than, than to exotics, it's been given to modeling of vanillas, even down, I mean, from, from the very vanilla stuff or stuff that used to be considered relatively vanilla, yield curve modeling and swap pricing and so forth, up to, you know, options, vanilla options again. And the focus is not so much on, necessarily so much on, on, on the latest generation of exotics or, or more complicated products, but rather to actually try and model, uh, get better, get better handle on, on what we, you know, would normally call vanilla options or vanilla products. Okay. And then I saw that you just received uh, recognition as risk managers or risk magazines quant of the year for mm -hmm. 2012. So congratulations. And Thank you. can you tell a little bit about, uh, you know, tell us what has led you to be so successful in this industry? And I think this is the second time that you've received this award, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, luck, you know, basically. Luck. Mm -hmm. And hard work, you know. The more I practice, the harder, the, the, the luckier I get. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely, you know, a big, a big part of it. Uh, being in, you know, working with really good colleagues, um, always, uh, always trying to, you know, know uh, trying to expand my horizon and come up with, uh, always try to come up with new things and sort of not necessarily being stuck in working in one particular little corner of things and trying to come up with something different, I guess, mm. is, is what l leads me to write papers and then eventually, you know, uh, in this case, to receive this award. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you know, it has value for the business that we come up with something that the competitors haven't thought about yet. Mm. Um, and are there any new products or developments on the horizon that you're, that you're excited about? Always, always, yeah. Like? <laughs> Um, several things, um, but mainly in, in the vanilla option space, I think vanilla options and how we model those has been sort of um, probably, I wouldn't say ignored, but probably not had, have received the amount of attention that uh, should have been. And uh, there's a lot of, you can still squeeze a lot of uh, in interesting information out of option prices as you see them in, in markets, and I think trying to do that and um, uh, trying to model the underlying fundamentals such as supply and demand and hedging and people's positions in the markets, uh, I think it's an interesting topic and mm -hmm. something I'm very interested in at the moment. Okay. Yeah. 
So looking forward 10 years, what do you see the market looking like then? Or what do you oh, that's always very difficult, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean. What is one thing that may stick out at you when you, when you look out there? I think, I think the current picture of all these zombie banks that we have sitting around uh, being kept alive on government funding, more or less, or uh, with very high costs and very uh, rigid internal structures, uh, I think they'll be in trouble going forward, and I think that, um, and I think that you would see either some of these banks die, or you would see, you know, some. Const I mean, there some mergers of these banks, or you know, some, something some dramatic things going on, or winding down of activities, or or both this, and we will also at the same time, I think, see small and more nimble players uh, entering the market. Um, who no, do not necessarily have the, the, the bad, you know, the bad sort of uh, legacies that some of these banks uh, carry around. Um, and I think that's, that's going to happen over the next 10 years. That's my guess, at least. Mm -hmm. But whether that's, uh, you know, whether that's actually going to happen, who knows? I mean, we'll see. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you think that the new regulations, especially in the U.S., are helping us move towards that direction? It's hard to say, really. I mean, it's hard to say really whether all this regulation really helps much or it just creates a lot of work, uh, really. Yeah. Um, it, it, the, the question is really what's the purpose of all this regulation at the end of the day? Is it, if it is to prevent banks from engaging in certain, certain activities, then, it, then, it, then instead of regulating it with all sorts of capital charges, it might just be easier to ban it yeah. or to split banks or whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's high, of course, highly political and highly... Mm. It's all unfolding, you know, all, before all on our eyes every day. Exactly. Yeah. Unfolding before our eyes, uh, you know, as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, um, you could kind of discuss whether all this CPU time and all this quant time going into calculating all sorts of capital numbers, whether that is necessarily spent the best way in the bank, whether that's just not um, an enormous overhead that we have to carry around, mm -hmm. or whether that actually contributes to any sort of value at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Um, so, second question is, you know, how long, second qu most obvious question is, how long are, are central banks going to continue to support the, you know, the, the banks with cheap liquidity and so forth? When is that going to die out? When, when are the taxpayer money uh, going to sort of run out? Um, that's the question. For most, we think probably, hopefully, sooner rather than later, right? For me, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, those are all the questions I had for you. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you might want to say or that I should ask? Yeah, I mean, I had an interesting discussion. I don't know if this actually fits in here, but I had an interesting discussion today at lunch about, and this is something that people are very passionate about, about the quality of graduates. Mm -hmm. um, is the pool that we're getting our, our, our the education system actually providing what we need in terms of talent or not? And the general consensus was not. Um, and I think that's actually not necessarily a big question for mankind, but for quant kind at least, mm -hmm. is um, do we actually, I mean, do our education system actually provide us with enough talent? Uh, and are they, is that talent educated correctly? Um, but it's sort of, um, you know, it's funny. You know, it's a funny, it's, it's, it's funny that everyone in the, or a lot of senior people like me complain about the same thing. It's difficult to hire ta talent and the attitude of the, the people we can recruit is just not good enough. And where do you and, and the skill set, skill set and attitude is sort of both, both are not in the league we need it really. Where do you see the, the good quality coming from? Is there a certain area, a certain country that you're recruiting from? Or do you think that's just overall worldwide it's a problem? I think it's all, overall worldwide a problem. Mm. And I think it's since the Cold War. Um, the technical skills have just been uh, devaluated as in the sense that uh, it's just been mass fabrication, really, uh, and uh, sort of the uh, the interest in uh, in uh, 
catering, I mean, uh, the interest in actually producing the absolute top and elite uh, scientists uh, is not really there anymore. You just produce engineers that can fill a seat mm. and do a role. Um, and so they all look like Facebook pilots to us on Face this side. Facebook what? Pilots, you know, Aww. on this side. Okay. Uh. Okay. So what suggestions might you have for <laughs> graduates out there that want to get into the quant world and... Learn something while you're in yeah. school. Mm -hmm. um, and also be critical to uh, the subjects that uh, you're presented to, uh, presented to and uh, you know, be sure that you actually learn it rather than learn the subjects and understand the subjects rather than just uh, you know, uh, learn it by heart or just be sure that you actually understand the subjects to the extent that you can teach other people about it or uh, to the extent that you can do more than just pass the exam, that you can actually use it when you get out on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's so, good advice. I don't know, but <laughs> it's my advice at least. Okay, well, thank you for sharing your time with us, and okay. stay thank tuned you. for more interviews here at Global Derivatives TV. We'll be reporting on day two tomorrow. Thank you.